talk about Jennifer Ann's group today, and this is the organization that you founded. Uh, we want to get some overview first, and then we're going to ask you more about the aspects where video games can play a role in preventing and making those aware of teen dating violence. But start off at the top, if you would, please. Give us an idea of what you know the story is behind how Jennifer Ann's group came to be. Sure. Um, so Jennifer Ann's group, like uh, many nonprofit organizations that are named for a person, unfortunately has a tragedy behind it. Uh, Jennifer Ann Crescenti is my daughter. And when she was in her last semester of high school, she was murdered by her ex-boyfriend. Um, Jennifer is my only child. And so not only was it important to me to uh, continue to have her name uh, I guess, live on beyond her. It was also important to me uh, in terms of my purpose or my identity as a, a parent to continue to feel like I was doing something in Jennifer's name. Uh, I was very unaware of the prevalence or the dangers of teen dating violence. I'd had any number of uncomfortable conversations with Jen about smoking, alcohol, uh, drinking and driving, unprotected sex. But the issue of abusive relationships amongst teenagers and even tweens, uh, I just had no idea that it was such a, a significant problem. And so I, I created Jennifer Ann's group in her name and memory in order to help prevent future tragedies from impacting other young people and their friends and family. One of the things I did not know uh, originally was that, for example, by the time they graduate from college, 44% of all people will have been in an abusive relationship. And so these are those young people who are graduating from college. Uh, often our society likes to um, blame victims for the things that happen to them. And one of the ways that we try and frame it is we try and frame it as it happening to other people. And this is a good example of it happening to those people who are aspiring to do exactly what society is, is, is advocating they do, go on and get a college degree. So nearly half of them have been in an abusive relationship. At the same time, 81% of parents do not believe that teen dating violence is a problem or don't even know what teen dating violence is. And so to the extent that I wanted to increase awareness and then provide educational information, uh, creating Jennifer Ann's group to me was the way to, to, to do that. Uh, we're going to ask you uh, about, you know, that number because right already in chat, and it was something that stood out to me. We found you through the AGC article that you did with the newspaper in Atlanta. And that number uh, stood out to me because uh, I would have never imagined it being that high and already chat has, has said the same thing literally thinking the same thing and that's a massive number i had no idea and i'm a parent of a nine and five year old and you're right i've thought of some of the topics that you brought up but i hadn't thought about teen uh you know dating violence as something and so with us being a, a video game minded show i guess my question for you is is when you look at the approach of how gaming helps in this education the way that you're influencing people and helping them understand this real problem. Kind of describe how video games have helped you with that work. So originally, uh, I would say, now I have a technology background. Um, and so to me, the, the first thing I did just to do something was I created a website. And so kind of traditional outreach where I was providing this information online on a website uh, there weren't a lot of options in terms of social media at the time. This was in 2006. Um, but just putting that information out there was difficult because it was, if people don't know that something is a problem, then it's unlikely that they're going to be searching for information about it online. Yeah. And given that so many parents were unaware of the issue, and then especially at, in, at that time in 2006 and 2007, no states required that this information be taught in school districts. And so I, I, what I realized was I couldn't wait for parents. I couldn't wait for schools to, to, to teach this information. 
So I instead decided, why don't I try and, and find some way of engaging young people by going to where those young people already are? And video games made sense to me. Um, I, I, I thought back to when I was a kid, I thought about how unlikely I would be approaching my parents or my teachers saying, hey, can you tell me what a healthy dating relationship looks like because I'm dating this person and there's some things happening. I wasn't going, I would not have done that. It doesn't mean that young people today are different, but I felt like finding something where a young person could learn about this information on their own. They could learn about it through a medium that they enjoyed. And so what we did was in 2008, we had our, our, we launched an annual game design competition. We challenged game developers from around the world to create a game about teen dating violence without using any violence in the game itself. And there are several reasons for that. One of the reasons is sometimes it's fun to have a challenge, uh, a limitation like that, because you wind up with some very creative um, approaches or solutions. And that's what we found is the case. So we've run this annual competition every year since. We launched it in February. And through that annual competition, we've now produced over 60 small but meaningful and impactful video games about teen dating violence and related issues. Uh, so including bystander awareness, gaslighting, consent, culture, any number of things. And so what we're, our goal, especially at first, was if we create something that a young person enjoys doing, and while they're enjoying it, they just happen to learn more about it, that's wonderful. What I didn't realize at the time was that there was the possibility to do much more than just increase awareness and increase educational information. Uh, so in 2010, the winning game that year was called Grace's Diary. It came from a, a small game studio in Thailand. And when I started reading the reviews after we published the game, some of these young people who played the game were genuinely affected by the story. This narrative was very moving. It really connected with them. And I found them writing reviews saying, please play this game. It's so important. I didn't expect to feel this way. And at that point, I realized, wait a second, we can do something more with this. We can actually, there's a persuasive element that I, I had not considered in these games where we can actually change unhealthy beliefs or attitudes that somebody has. And so you're 12 or 13 years old, and it might be that your sense of what's acceptable in a dating relationship has been informed by your parents. And if your parents don't have a healthy relationship, which unsurprisingly happens quite a bit, that means you're then looking to your older peers uh, or siblings, and if you don't see it there, you're turning to your culture. So maybe you're learning about behavior that is considered romantic, but is in reality, for example, stalking. And you think you think there's nothing wrong with it. And it might be the person that it's happening to thinks there's nothing wrong with it because we don't have very good information. And so changing unhealthy beliefs or attitudes about what a relationship should look like is one really important aspect of these games. And just for our games alone, there have already been two published studies in peer-reviewed journals showing that after a single gameplay, it indeed did change unhealthy beliefs or attitudes amongst the game players. And we're talking less than an hour to play a game. So it, that's amazing to me. I, I, this whole thing is amazing. And, and the reason that I'm looking at my phone right now is to give credit to the AJC reporter who, who brought you on because Catherine Kicklitter um i wouldn't have found you as soon as i have because of that mike already and i have have uh, used our internal chat to say like this is a story that touches us and and Absolutely. chat <laughs> the chat is 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 saying the same thing uh great idea to get people involved and at the same time made being aware about this and and the one thing about you talked mm -hmm. about discussions that parents have and the way children learn things through seeing their parents and then discussions with their parents or their family, right? Because not everyone's raised by their parents, is right. being able to be more aware of these topics so it can be top of mind and, yeah. and that can be shared. And that goes to a lot of topics, especially right now in the United States with, with systemic racism and such, 
those are topics that more people, especially as a white man, and, and the role of the anti-racist, to be able to have those conversations. So uh, we say this almost every time we have an interview, Drew. Uh, <laughs> well, these are topics that we could dedicate hours to, right? And in the format of a morning show, it's not how we do things, but I'm certainly going to keep your number and invite you back. Maybe we can do a long-form discussion about this some other time. Absolutely. Uh, Drew Crescenti, thank you so much for joining us uh, on the Gaming Morning Show and, and bringing this to the top of mind. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. And thank you not only for inviting me, but thank you so much for your interest in this topic. It's, it's a topic that's not often discussed in February is the National Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. So it's coming up. Yeah, thank you again. And we'll, we'll talk more about that.